Hey everybody, it's Casual Boops coming at you with another video and today we're going to cover the brand new tier 10 Italian reward tank, the Caro de Compattimento 45T. Um, I'm just going to call it the Caro for short. Um, and um, you know, I think this has kind of sparked a lot of interest because this is the most recent addition to the uh, bunch of Clan Wars reward tanks that you can only get from fighting in Clan Wars. And um, you know, for a lot of people, this is something that's maybe interesting. They want to see. They want to see: is this going to be something that should pick up for? Uh, is it going to be meta? Is it going to be you know overpowered? Is it going to be really really good? Is it something you should pick up and spend? You know, either get it because you earned it, or or uh, you know maybe you can bid on it for using I don't know so many tens of thousands of bonds. And I'll just say right away, like before we even get into it, I don't think it's that awesome. I don't think it's very good. It, it's like fine at best. Um, and I'll get into I'll get into the things now. I guess why um, the easiest comparison here we're going to compare to the Progetto 65, the other Italian um, tier 10 medium tank, and they're very similar in a lot of ways, right? They're both Italian. They both uh, have auto reloaders. Uh, the Caro gets um, the improved right the the compensation mechanic. They're both medium tanks, even though the Caro kind of sort of plays like a pocket heavy tank. Basically, the gist is. Um, the big difference in the two tanks is like the armor profile of the Progetto is uh, squishy, but it has some it has some um, you know angles, right? Depending on what you're shooting at it, or if you auto aim, you should never do that. You'll probably bounce in the hull. But the turret is pretty cheese, right? So the big difference there is the Caro um, has has similar kind of auto bounce upper plate, but then it also has like especially if it's using gun depression, you have pretty solid armor on your turret too. So that comes at a big cost though. Um, so I'll just, yeah, that's that's the armor. We've gone over the armor real quick. Um, against APCR, obviously it relies on angles a lot. So if you're shooting, if something is shooting it with uh, with heat rounds, like let's say a Russian medium, those are my favorite example. Um, it's still pretty okay, right? Obviously this is the, the turret, um, the flat bit around the mantlet is still a weak spot, but that's pretty hard to hit, right? So generally speaking, you get pretty good armor. You have a cupola, right? So if you're a tier eight facing one of these things, um, you can hit in the cupola and you'll be fine. Uh, it's a tiny, tiny shot though. Um, but it has this really good armor if you're if you're going hull down and using your gun depression. I will say that you can't always be doing this, right? There aren't that many positions in the game on every map or whatever where you can be using 10 degrees of gun depression or whatever this has. So it, it can be armored in certain circumstances. Uh, but that comes at a big cost, right? So, and on paper, the DPM is better than the Progetto, but uh, it doesn't seem to be that way in practice. Because in order for your DPM to be legitimate, you need to be hitting your shots, and they need to be penetrating. So the 268 pen, standard pen of the Progetto is obviously 20 millimeters more than the Caro. So like, the Caro doesn't get very good standard pen. Obviously, if you're just going to spam gold in this thing, that's a little bit different story. Like, um, 320 APCR pen is pretty good. Um, you know, that's fine. Does 400 average damage as opposed to 360, that's better. Like, there's things about this that are better. It gets a four round clip, just like the Progetto, but it also, here's where the, here's, here's a big difference. Here's where the things start to fall off. The intra clip on the Progetto is two and a half seconds, right? So it's a pop, pop, pop. You can just dump your clip. And the intra clip on the Caro is four seconds. So, shoot. Two, three, four, shoot, two. Like it just, it takes forever to let the gun empty out. Um, so that's a huge downside. And you don't get as good a penetration and so on. Uh, shell velocity is not that awesome. Like I find it, uh, also the gun handling is substantially worse. And that's one of the things that I find to be the most frustrating thing about the Caro is that I just, it seems like I can't really get the thing to behave. Um, the gun just like, I have, good DPM, but I can't make the shots land, right? Like the aiming time of almost three seconds. This doesn't seem like 0.4 seconds between these two things is huge. Like it's almost a half second. It just takes forever to lay the gun in. And then the final accuracy of base being 0.36, you can get this down to like 0.32, but like it just takes forever to lay in. So it doesn't matter if you have good DPM, if you miss two of your four shots, right? Um, it's not quite as fast as the Progetto. Uh, so basically I think it's, um, I think it's a worse Progetto, and I think that if you have nothing else to spend your bonds on, then uh, I would probably get a 907. If you're if you're auctioning, if you're going to do the auction thing, uh, I would get a 907 or a VKK. Is actually those are fun. They're not particularly good, but they are fun to play. This the Caro I found to be very frustrating to play. Um, 
doesn't feel like it has quite enough armor uh, to, to, to go up front and be in a heavy tank, but it doesn't really have quite the mobility to be the, the flexi medium tank and stuff, and the, the gun just doesn't really behave anything beyond mid-range. Um, it, it sort of feels like it's kind of straddling this middle ground that's like this heavium, but it can't really do either one very well because the gun wants you to be up close, but the armor wants you to be a little further away. Um, and so yeah, that's that's the stats-wise part of this. And so without further ado, we'll, we'll get into the replay. All right, so we're going to start off playing on, uh, I think this is Erlenberg. We're watching Zero, 3Mark Legend, uh, play his uh, his Karo. And if you've seen Zero play games before, Zero does not carry standard rounds. So sorry in advance um, <laughs> for the gold spam. Uh, also, we're going to beat up some tier 6s, I'm sorry, some tier 8s. And there's also no artillery in the game. Uh, so this is going to be like a, a prime example of like the best case scenario. Like there's no artillery to, 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 uh, to you know, rain down on you and you get to beat up tier 8s in your tier 10. So like this is the best case scenario and I just want like not every game is like this and I haven't had a game anywhere close to this when I played my Karo. So I just want to like, I want people to see this and think, oh my god, this is just the most broken tank in the entire game. But it, it can do things. And there's the, uh... The, the land already, the, the 4005 balancing out zero. And so he puts in two shots there, and then obviously in the auto reloader mechanic. Or, you know what? I'm sorry, it doesn't have the modified, the, the improved mechanic. One of the news articles said that it did, but it appears to not have that. So it's a lot like the uh, the standard Progetto. Uh, and you can see from far off, and with standard rounds uh, fired from the enemy tank, the zero is using his gun depression, so the armor does hold up on the turret. And. Um, yeah, so that's that's a thing. It, it does it does work, right? You wouldn't be able to do that in a Progetto because they'd probably cheese your turret in a Progetto. But but you, you're looking there, like the reticle, the size of the reticle when when Zero had to shoot at that uh, at that uh, um, Patriot, which is huge, and it and only lays in to like have really good um, accuracy if you're willing to sit still for like three seconds, and then you shoot, and then you have to wait four seconds to load again, like. Everything just takes forever with this tank, and so I find myself whiffing more often than not. And that is a Centurion with a stock turret, so that guy is outmatched. He should not be where he is. And um, also, just want to have a just want to say something really quick about team deployment. You can see we have an IS-3 at B1 and a Bisante at A0, and I get that it's a tier 8 game or it's a tier 10 game, and you guys are tier 8s and all, but like. That is not, that's not where heavy tanks go, and so it's, um, anyways, that's just something. Oh, it's Zero tried to, try to use its gun depression, but the little rubble pile there picked up, picked up the tank before he could put the shot in. So there's two rounds left, and he knows he can clip this guy, and he doesn't even have to get into the really deep reload. I will say this, one thing that I like about this tank and the Progetto more than the, uh, the Rhino is that the, the, uh, the... It doesn't take so long. Like I don't feel like I'm out of the fight for so long compared to the you know the Rhino. It just feels like oh my god, as soon as you shoot once or even God forbid you shoot twice, you're just down for like 30 seconds. And this at least feels like it's a little more forgiving that way. Like you can afford to whiff a shot and you're not just you're not just totally hosed for the next minute and a half or whatever. So we got a full mag. We're back up again. And so far, you know we're even on kills. A uh, bunch of tier eights on our team and couple of tier 8s on the enemy team and the TVP, uh, but map positioning wise we are losing the zero line. Uh, let's see, the, the enemy Karo has destroyed the 430U on our on, on the zero line. So the, we know the enemy Karo is over on the zero line somewhere, or at least has shots in that direction. But right now we're just going to wait, 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 and you see, look at that, accuracy, right? Most of that tank was being covered by our, uh, by our uh, reticle, but yet still can't, still can't get the thing to hit. So I think Zero is using a purple purple vents to get the reload as good as it can be, and then a purple V stab, and he said he's using a turbo. I think I can hear the turbo, and that's what I've been trying to use that as well. And just the gun is so frustrating that I'll probably end up using a uh, using a uh, rotation mechanism uh, when I you know, and maybe maybe hopefully that will make the gun tolerable. But uh, anyways, so. You know, it can do things, obviously, with with a clip potential like that, like 1,600 clip potential is legit. It also takes 12 seconds to put that clip potential down. So there are upsides and there are downsides, and I, I don't think the tank is brokenly overpowered. I think it's fine, 
I don't think it's really all that. I don't think it's all, really all that good, to be honest. But it, it can have good games, right? Especially you're going to see mostly good players playing this tank. So I wouldn't be surprised. Ooh, you can see the hull of the Renegade. I'm going to put a shot in. You're going to see good players playing this tank. And, um, except for me, right? I, I, I don't know. I've played a couple of games in it and I didn't really know what I was doing and played it poorly. But mostly, generally speaking, you're going to see players playing this tank that know exactly what they're doing. And so it's going to be easy to say, oh, this tank is really stupidly broken because look at this guy just clean up the whole team or something like that. And, yeah, I mean, that might be because that guy's very good at the game, but that doesn't mean that the tank itself is good. So, you know, don't, uh... Don't get your jimmies all rustled. Um, so we've totally, totally looked, lost the 9-0 the line. You can see the Ferdinand, the Visante, the Progetto, they're all like totally... They're not in a position to defend, and they're also not really... Uh, I don't know. They're not in very good positions to do much of anything except die. And so... Zero's going to come back and see if he can't... Um, I don't know. Just kind of dig this one out of the gutter here. And, uh, and you can see the mobility using the turbo... Uh, we get it to 60, and it does it does get around a little bit. It's not like the mobility on this thing is bad. It's just that, you know, the Progetto is so much better. Oh, can we get a shot? No, apparently not. There might be some... Oh. Yeah, and the armor only works if you're using, you know, if the, if the angles are right, right? So if you're... If you're if somebody's above you, they're shooting down, that flattens out the armor, the armor doesn't work. Or if you're, you know... Um, yeah, that's basically what just happened there. If, you know, if you're not using the gun depression, then the armor's not going to work very well. And there is our... And <laughs> you see, the gun is really misbehaving. Alright, but there we go. Okay. Okay, so, we still have a Karo on the 9-0 line, and Zero doesn't... What do we want to do here, right? So, where do you go? Do you, you don't want to go in the middle, in the 5 line, down in the city, because there's still a trash barn there. Uh, you can't push in the 9-0 because you'll just get eaten. Zero is, a, zero is like a two-shot for that Carl. Um, it doesn't seem to be going very well on the nine, on the 1-2. So what do you do? And I think Zero is just going to try to put some vision out and see if we can't catch the enemy doing something silly. Um, there is a tortoise over there that's last spotted. And so we'll just see... Maybe. Maybe. Patience is key, right? It's 7-7. Seven this has been a, uh, a game where we've gone kind of back and forth. And it could very easily be thrown. But we'll just see. Oh, okay, so enemy defender tries to move, make a flank arena move. And look how slow the gun is handling. Like, zero slammed that shot in and it, and it worked. But, like, that, that, you know, it's all the size of the reticle. It was, like, two times the size of the tank. So that very well, very easily could not have worked. And it wouldn't have been surprising. And that's been my experience with the tank, is that you try to make a shot like that and it just doesn't flippin' work. Okay, so we got one shot in, we gotta wait four seconds, and we get another shot, and that's cool. Um, fire, because I've played. I... <laughs> isn't, that, uh, isn't that dynamic? That guy had a good game. Still having a good game. Wow. Zero gets an extra thousand damage. Uh, you know, it's really easy to make a profit in this tank when you set fires, because you save on ammo costs. So if you can, I recommend doing that whenever possible. And since this guy is no longer a threat, Zero just goes ahead and slams a shot in there, uh, and we clean him up, right? So that was huge, right? We just opened up the entire 9-0 line um, by getting two shots in, a lucky fire, and then we cleaned up the last bit. Uh, and we're at, like, five kills and 5,200 damage, by the way. Like, this is already a pretty monster game, but we could so so very easily lose this. And so Zero can see into the town, and we know this, this 4,005 is going to try to go around the corner, and we throw a shot in and, and it hits, right? But again, I just want to point out, the reticle was huge. So, it's... the I, I want to keep stressing this. The accuracy of this tank is awful. And so, Zero has gotten very fortunate. And he's also using food and the best, you know, the purple equipment and stuff. He's doing everything he can to make it less bad. But it's still very, very bad. And so, and he's also got, I would venture to say lucky. Some of these shots have been fairly lucky. So, not to say that, um... Obviously, a lot of this is down to the fact that Zero knows exactly what he's doing, but don't, uh, what I, I want to caution you to look at this, you know, don't look at this replay and say, oh my god, I, I'm going to get this tank because this means every game will be like this, so I can just face roll the enemy team, and that is not, uh, real life. That's not what's going to happen. I mean, maybe it will be, I guess, and maybe you'll be the trendsetter, but, like, I don't know. I feel like I know what I'm doing, and I'm, 
uh, at least as good as most people, and I don't really like this tank. It doesn't really work for me, so... Anyways, so save your bonds is what I'm trying to say. And if you're planning on bidding on something, I guess I'd probably bid on the 907 first. For the love of God, do not get a 121B. That tank is absolute trash. It's like, I have one and I wish I could give it back. So if you're considering, like, what tank do I want to, you know, what, what do I want to get? Uh, the answer is not that one. Alright, so wait for it. We're going to wait and let the thing aim in four more seconds. And another fire. Again, if you ever... <laughs> highly recommend, if you have the option, to just go ahead and set fires. Because it really saves on the ammo cost. Um, <laughs> really makes it easy to get damage without costing yourself too much in ammo. And, uh, you know. <laughs> good, good job to Zero uh, for that spectacular aiming and uh, strategically setting that guy on fire on purpose, or whatever. And so, okay, so now we have we have a Char, a Udez, and a Pat, the, the, the Tier 9 Pat. So two Tier 9s and a Tier 8 medium tank. And uh, we have no data on them, but we have 1,600 clip potential and enough hit points to kind of soak up some shots. So Zero's going to kind of get in here, because the, the Ferdinand and the Progetto 65 don't really have any... It doesn't look like they really want to do anything. It doesn't really look like they really want to, I don't know... We have a char that's last spotted over at B0, so, or B1, so it's, that's a problem. But there it is. We can't quite... Okay, zero slams a shot on there. And you noticed the tank, um, there was something that shot at the rubble that was in front of zero. And that means it must have come from the one line, right? Some over there on that island. And so that's important. Now we know that's where a tank is. And I don't believe the Patton has ever been spotted. He's not anywhere. Okay, we just proxy spot the char, and now we have the full mag again. So let's just wait and see. Oh, okay, so that the Udaz has just been spotted. Aim, aim, aim. So the, the am accuracy is doing what it's supposed to do right there. And, okay, so zero h held perfectly still, and that was why the second one went in. But you can see the first one did not, and zero has two rounds, so he's gonna wait for three in case he makes a mistake. But uh, which I think is a good play. And this, this <laughs> a char just there's nothing you could have done there. I don't know what I don't know what the guy was thinking. Maybe he was hoping that uh, that this maybe he thought this was a Rosserante or, or the Rhinocerante or something like that that had a longer clip potential or longer interclip. I don't know. Either way, he's dead, and that's not how you play against these things. So we have a Patton that is somewhere, and the Patton has if he's using the big gun, he has 390 alpha. So, Zero should be able to take a hit from the guy. We have 1,600 clip potential now, now that all four rounds are loaded. So, I think that Zero just gets to feast on this guy. He can just dump the clip and, and uh, take all of this guy's hit points. But, oh! Okay, he's got 1,700 hit points. So, that means he's just outside of clip potential. So, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. We don't want to get shot. We're going to play a little ring around the Rosie here. Okay, all right, so now we have the full clip again, and Zero is just going to... I don't know what this guy's doing. I don't know what I don't know what he thinks he's doing, but, uh... Wow. Uh, <laughs> okay, wow. So, unfortunate for that M46 Patton, that guy um, didn't have a very fun time, I don't think. But, uh, what an incredible game. All right, so at the end of the game, Zero ends up bringing home 10,300 damage and 10 kills with 1,600 blocked, which is kind of remarkable. Uh, and that gets in the high caliber, the uh, the ace tanker, the top gun, and the pools medal, which is, uh, I mean, what a, what a game by anyone's standards. That was pretty incredible. Uh, and that means Zero got 1,740 base XP, which, again... It's remarkable because a lot of the things that are in this game are tier 8s, and you don't get very much XP for shooting tier 8s when you're in a tier 10 tank. So the fact that Zero got 1740 base XP even while shooting tier 8s means that he put the team on his back, and you can tell by the team damage that that is definitely the case. Yes, this team did not want to win, and Zero said, no, you will win, and I will see to it that it happens. Uh, and then Zero ended up pulling a profit of 46,000 credits, uh, but I think most of that is because of battle payments and uh, personal reserves and so on. I don't think if he had no battle payments and no uh, personal reserves going, I think he would have probably been in, in the hole about 45,000 credits. Spamming the gold is not cheap, ladies and gentlemen, especially with a tank like this where the, it doesn't necessarily always have the most accurate gun. So, anyways, uh, so hopefully that 
this game has helped you decide whether this is a tank you're interested in, or you know maybe you want to play Clan Wars. Maybe maybe watching this replay has uh, made you decide that you want to play Clan Wars and earn one of these things. Personally, uh, I wouldn't bother with it, but uh, get a nine of seven. But um, anyways, that's the game, and uh, and thanks to Zero for sending in the replay, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. All right.